Manchester City have sold Julian Alvarez for a fee of around 95 million euros to Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid over in La Liga, which is a massive fee, a record one for Manchester City to receive for a player. And it's going to be interesting to see how this goes down. This is my reaction to that. And I'm going to break down this transfer and what it could potentially mean for City today. I'm going to talk about the fee, why he's going, was Alvarez a success at, uh, at Manchester City? I'm going to talk about what we potentially lose. Uh, is this a blow? Uh, will we replace him? And loads more because I think this is a transfer worth talking about. It's a notable, historic one from Manchester City. Uh, even if it is an exit, it's definitely worth writing down in the history books. Um, and I can't wait to talk about this, actually. Um, I'm reasonably relaxed about it. But I still think this could be divisive overall when we talk about it. Uh, Alvarez, of course, uh, 24 years old now. Uh, joined from River Plate in 2022. Two seasons at Manchester City when he won an awful lot of stuff. Mainly playing as a backup striker. But undeniably an important part um, of this all-conquering Manchester City squad. Uh, which leads you to the question, why is he leaving right now? Before I get into that, please do me a massive favour. Give the video a like immediately. We've got to aim for 115 likes. And therefore, multiples of 115 likes after that but it's a good place to start isn't it give the video a like and if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing as well and help support a lifelong Manchester City fan as I create this content I hope you all enjoy it so let's start with that fee it is a record fee Manchester City have received there. Uh, 85, 95 million euros. Of course, it's around um, 70 million quid initially, uh, 70 million up front, which could arise to uh, around 82 million pounds sterling. That is uh, not Raheem Sterling, uh, Sterling, our currency. Uh, if. City reached those, or Atletico Madrid and Alvarez reached those add-ons. What those add-ons are, we don't know. We, we, uh, we might come out in the press afterwards, I don't know, but it's pretty much always guesswork. It's usually a combination of personal achievements and Atletico achievements. Could be like if they win the Liga, if he plays more than 30 games, if he scores more than X amount of goals, if they win certain competitions, who knows what it could be. But either way, the clubs usually make some of them attainable and some sort of special case scenarios to justify it from both ends. But but either way, we can't deny that 95 million uh, potentially euros is an awful lot of money. Uh, our record sale after, of course, the sales of Jesus and Sterling, which brought in an awful lot of money too. And it's good money. It's good money considering we paid about 14 million quid for him back in 2022 from River Plate. We more than five, what's, the, what's quintupled? Is that, is that the word? Five times the amount of what we paid for him. So it's an excellent fee for a guy who doesn't want to be here. We cannot deny that. We're going to win the net spend trophy after all. And not that I care about that but it's a really good uh, fee for a player that doesn't want to be here um you can never really shrug a 60 odd million profit on a player in two seasons especially one that hasn't arguably been entirely pivotal to Manchester City success he's been involved in it don't get me wrong but he's not been fully responsible for City's success. But on that word success anyway, was Alvarez's time at Manchester City's success? Yeah, I would argue it is. If you look at his overall contribution, he played 103 games for Manchester City in the end with 36 goals and 18 assists. So that's 54 goal contributions in 103 ga uh, games. So that is... Yeah, basically a goal every other game, slightly above that, which is really good. Uh, 30 goal contributions in 67 league games, uh, 20 goals and 10 assists. Um, Champions League, he had 12 in 17, which was 8 goals and 4 assists. So yeah, and obviously uh, some smattered about in other competitions as well. Um, a lot of that, of course, came as a backup striker. He was often, uh, in the first season in particular, the guy on the bench behind Erling Haaland. But it was the second season where he got a lot more starts, 30 other starts last season. Um, under Guardiola side that won four... Premier Leagues in a row, uh, taking to uh, four Peter course. He was a starter a lot. A lot of that time, of course, he was a starter as a midfielder, given Kevin De Bruyne his absence. And then he was a starter uh, when Erling Haaland was out as a striker as well. And if you talk about his time, the things that immediately jump out to me was in his first season where he got the hat trick. Uh, uh, severe in the Champions League of course he was big goals when he won, went to win the treble winning goals against Chelsea uh, and Fulham uh, one of his best games in a City shirt probably came at the historic FIFA Club World Cup final it was two goals and assists when we beat uh, Fluminese 4-0 which was very you know it was a big game for him of course I'm not saying it's the hardest competition in the world but to win it Alvarez was pivotal on that then of course at the start of the season last year there was the big goal 
uh, against Newcastle when we won 1-0. And he had a good Christmas as well. Four goals and assist over Christmas and New Year, which helped um, that unbeaten run of the Etihad and helped kick City on as he went to win four in a row. He wasn't always totally smooth um, in the attacking midfielder role. I think Guardiola played him there because he wanted someone with, in a Guardiola word, a sense of smell, or sense or smell of goal, basically. Guardiola... In the absence of Kevin De Bruyne, he wanted someone who can get up close to the strikers, link up with Haaland, and contribute that way. And he did contribute in his own way. He actually started the season off really well. And there were some shouts about him being one of the best players in the league at one point. But his form did drop very quickly as teams found out Manchester City uh, around the winter months. And I don't think he was fully effective then after after that spell. He had some good moments, don't get me wrong. And he scored some go- good goals because Alvarez, he's always going to score some goals. Um, but he wasn't anywhere near his best. Uh, in the second half of his second season and I think he struggled as a midfielder and eventually started to blunt his I would say his instinct uh, as a striker a little bit because he lost confidence a little bit and if you lose confidence a little bit you're probably going to lose your edge a little bit and that's pretty much normal for anyone never mind uh, a young striker as a backup I think he started to feel that, but still, you can't deny when you look at his record at City, you know, look, a goal a goal or assist every other game, uh, you know, two Premier Leagues, an FA Cup, uh, of course, we reached another final FA Cup, but a Champions League, a Super Cup, a Club World Cup, the only thing he didn't win was a Carabao Cup, the big one, obviously, uh, but it's still, you know, during that time as well, he won a Copa America um, and a, a World Cup, of course, as well, so he had a very good couple of years in Manchester, Um but, you know, uh, that leads to the point that why is he leaving? You know, I think his time at Manchester City was a success. I think it was. As a backup player, it was a, a 40 million signing. It was brilliant. It really was. Uh, it was a cracking signing in the end. I mean, I think if Haaland hadn't been there, I think he could have established himself and maybe even got better as the main striker. Not a genius like Haaland, but he could have got better and better, but it wasn't to be. But why is he leaving now? Look, Alvarez is not stupid. I think he knows that... Uh, with Alvar- uh, if De Bruyne um, and Haaland are available, he's going to be on the bench. And that was the case last year. He played an awful lot of football last year. So, so many people have turned around and gone, look, he got a lot of starts. So why is he leaving for starts? Yeah, he did. But it's not as simple as that. The second that De Bruyne was back, the second that Haaland was back, he was back on the bench collecting splinters, you know. And there's only so much you can take as a serial winner of doing that. And I think the writing was sort of on the wall for him. And even though, you know, he got plenty of time and he'd be a good squad player again next season, essentially that's all he is. His game time hinges hinges on injuries to other players. And I think that's a fair thing to say. And when you see the, the rise of form for Oscar Bob and people like that and the signing of Savino, he ain't going to play out wide. You know, Foden and De Bruyne, it's a, it's, a, it's a job to fit those two on the pitch. So Alvarez ain't getting in midfield anyway. And if Haaland stays fit, and largely Haaland, his injury record, touch wood, has been pretty good at Manchester City, then he's not going to start as a striker either so there's always a chance Haaland could get injured and he starts every single game but you haven't got a chance to wait for that and given the fact that he's done everything at Manchester City you know he really has he's won the league twice you know I can see why a move to the capital of Spain a beautiful city in Madrid gorgeous weather to be the number nine uh, for a club as beautiful and as wonderful as Atletico Madrid and they are you can turn the nose of Atletico if you want to because they're not at city's level probably true it is true but they're still a phenomenal club, Atletico Madrid, playing one of the best leagues in the world, probably the second best league in the world. Some would argue the best. Um, a fantastic stadium, a manager, a passionate Argentinian who will absolutely build the team around a workhorse of a striker uh, with passionate fans, a hardworking team built in his own image. I can see the appeal. I absolutely can. He knows he's not going to play. And this move right now, to go and be the main man somewhere and be one of the, the maybe the figureheads the main people in the Liga. It makes an awful lot of sense. He was rumoured to be on around 100k a week, so he'll get a massive pay rise, probably double his money uh, at Atletico Madrid. So I get it. It's frustrating for Manchester City, and the question could be, why are we letting him go? Well, City have this policy, of course, that we know, is that they let players go if they don't want to be here. And I respect that. I think it's mature. I think it's sensible. And I think the proof is sort of in the pudding. We can moan about our favourite players going, so we should keep them here. But we've just had an unprecedented period of success on the pitch that no English team has ever seen under Guardiola. The levels of success, the points, the trophies, the stats, insane. So I I would argue that's justification for this harmonious approach, this treat them like adults approach that Guardiola and City have got. They let players go 
if they don't want to be here because a player who doesn't want to be here is a player that's not focused. And I get that and I appreciate that. And I think it's a very sensible approach. It is. It is. I can't deny that. So I respect it. It will occasionally lose you the odd player. But if you get fair value and City will feel in this instance they got fair value, fair value like they did with Sterling and Jesus and Zinchenko and so on. Then I don't see the problem with it. I really don't. I think the players come in knowing the situation. You will get a chance. If you want to go, bring in the money and you can go. No player is held against their will as long as they bring in fair market value. And Alvarez has brought in that. He's brought in a really good fee and he gets to go with no bad blood whatsoever and City let him go. And maybe it's a chance for someone else to come in. And I think this approach in general that City take is mature it's responsible and it treats adults like adults if they want to be like adults and ultimately there is no smoke and mirrors there's honesty up front and a lot can be said for that I would appreciate that if I was a footballer and I think City have a habit of signing good professionals obviously there'll be one or two mistakes here and there but largely City sign respectable hard-working professionals and they don't rarely miss on that um they rarely miss on that and Alvarez pretty much fitted that category he told Pep and Cheeky and whatever that he'd like to go and be a starter somewhere Guardiola said we want you to stay but I respect it bring the money you can go and he went no fuss no arguments no no cliques in the camp no divisive rants at training whatever just calm dealt like an adult we got our money we got good service he got his move everyone is happy so what did we lose though what have we losing alvarez first and foremost we've lost our backup striker haven't we um we've lost our uh, yeah our, our sort of Plan B, if Harlan gets gets injured, we've lost that. We've lost a guy who will give you absolutely loads on the pitch. His work rate is insatiable. Uh, probably the hardest working player we've had since probably Tevez, I would argue, in terms of pressing. He presses like an absolute dog. Uh, there was a little bit of that to Gabriel Jesus as well, but I would argue Alvarez was even better at it. The amount of times Alvarez would close down the keeper successfully was absolutely absurd. Um, did we lose a genius? I would argue not. Could he be a genius one day with more confidence? Maybe. I don't know. But right now, probably I would say he's a very good striker. In the way that Dzeko was a very good striker. In the way that Bellatelli and Negredo were very good strikers. But were they Aguero? No. Aguero was a genius. Those people weren't. Haaland's a genius. Alvarez isn't, I would argue. That's not to say he's not a very good player. A cracking striker. One of the best in the world, arguably. But a genius? No. Irreplaceable? Absolutely not. Um, we also lose a guy who was pretty good in midfield. A great midfielder? No. I think it was very obvious at times last season we played the big sides, you know. We played in big games against Arsenal or whatever. That we, we looked a little bit predictable I would say uh, going forward he didn't have the nuance or the subtlety in that number 10 role that you would associate with Manchester City when you look at the levels that we had previously you know De Bruyne Gundogan not previously De Bruyne is still here but you get the point De Bruyne Silva Gundogan whatever um uh, Fernandinho not Fernandinho uh, Foden sorry uh, even Fernandinho I'd argue is a little bit better technically with his touch but largely these plays that were so technical and around the area Alvarez's second touch was often a tackle when he was uh, around the pockets he was not naturally good there I don't blame him for it whatsoever he's a striker but he was only a good midfielder against teams of a lesser quality but a, a relatively average one if not poor one against really good teams and I think City lost a little subtlety there but we did lose a very good striker we did lose a dependable player a reliable player a good goal scorer a guy with it with an eye for an assist not always the best passer but a good crosser a good free kick taker um, and a guy with a good instinct around the box and a likeable uh, teammate as well. So I guess that leads to the question, is this a blow? Yes and no, I would argue. You could argue that the, the money that we received more than makes up for the blow of losing a player. But it's a blow that we do not have an alternative option as a striker now. Does this mean we'll play false nine now, potentially? I think Guardiola is probably the only manager in the world that I wouldn't panic if we lose a player of this calibre. Look, if Guardiola is comfortable with Alvarez going. He doesn't want him to go. But if he's comfortable and we don't sign anyone, it means Guardiola has a solution, I would argue. We spent two years essentially playing the false nine sort of era with Foden giving it a go. Bernardo, Gundogan, De Bruyne, people, Mahrez drifted central at one point. And I've got no doubt that Guardiola would have something planned if Haaland wasn't available. It's a blow, absolutely, but it's not irreplaceable, you know? Um... And I don't, again, I don't think this is the same as losing Gundogan or I think this is a sort of very different... I think his role is very replaceable in different ways. This is not... 
not something that I don't think we can sort of make up in the squad. Maybe I'm wrong there. Maybe I'm personally uh, getting a little bit too optimistic. And some people would say I am every now and then. But to me, I don't think it is. If I was to be more cynical than I am as an optimistic person, you could say it is a blow. That actually the false nine system won't work. That actually Oscar Bob and Phil Foden won't be able to roll it back to the 2021 seasons or whatever. And we won't be able to recreate that level of genius. I think we will though. I think we will. Uh, I think Oscar Bob has potential there. I think Phil Foden could do it. But will it even be needed? Like Haaland's fitness has been pretty good. Touchwood once again. Largely he's been pretty good. Um... I think, depending on your mood, you could say this is a blow or not. I don't think anyone would say it's a massive blow, but it is a small one, maybe a big one. But you could argue that we could replace it. As a midfielder, we've got the options. We have to switch up how we play, but I don't know. If it's a big blow, do we need a replacement? And that's the final question I want to ask here. Do we need a replacement? I would argue we probably do. I think it's always good to have different ways, you know, to break down a team. I don't feel uh, 100% comfortable that Harden will be available for throughout the whole season. I think he's always liable for an injury. I think Haaland um, potentially being out could put a spanner in the works. And even though I do feel the replacement could be a false nine thing, could that be good enough to win the league again? To go for the Champions League, which is always the aim? I don't know. If we were to go down the false nine approach, what would it be? Could we have Kev just sort of running off Phil Foden a little bit? Could we have James McAtee giving a chance like we saw in preseason? Surely he's not quite up to that level yet. I think it would be Phil Foden personally. I think he'd play in that role, which would immediately free up De Bruyne to sort of do his thing a little bit around him. Uh, Oscar Bob seems a very natural fit as well, given that we've got Savinio to play on one side too. Oscar Bob, I think, is potentially a genius, actually. I really do believe that, which is... Um, a crazy thing to say, but I would argue Oscar Bob is a much more natural Manchester City player than Julian Alvarez. Is he a natural false nine? Arguably not, but is his footwork better in tight spaces? Does he have a, a delightful electric burst of pace? Yes. Can you look up with players better than Alvarez around the area? Possibly, yeah. But is he a striker? Maybe not. A false nine, attacking midfielder, we will see. Could we sign someone, you know? I was there thinking today that maybe we have a last-minute bid for Olmo, but it looks like, as I'm recording this anyway, which is in advance, I'll be honest with you, because I want to put it out as it happens, it looks like the, the Barcelona deal is now done. Will we sign a striker? Look, you'll go around names, and I've seen people mention people like Ivan Tony or Jokerez, or whatever he's called, for, I can't pronounce it, people like that. But I don't see us signing anyone established, and it's not Manchester City's style to do that. I think the reason we sign people like Alvarez is because they come in not expecting to be the striker starter in the way that Gabriel Jesus didn't either because we had an established striker. And 19, 20, 21-year-olds, they understand that if you're behind Haaland or Aguero, you have to wait and you have to learn and they're fine with that. So I think that would be the temptation if City did go down that route. And you could argue that maybe we've already gone down that route. If Claudio Acheveri, the guy who's joining in January from River Plate, carries on his development, it could be that City are just waiting for him to arrive. He absolutely has false nine potential he's not an out and out striker but he's a lot more natural in that role than some of the options City have got he still has a while to go though but City aren't afraid to play the long game we all know this you know I still feel like we need potentially another option there but it could be that Guardiola seen things in training with certain players to know that he could fix it right now as I'm recording this and it could be that names pop up after this I don't expect City to sign a striker I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we signed a midfielder an Olmo type and as a type, not those two players, but that type, an attacker that can play across the front line as a 10, as a winger, whatever. Not saying those two, but don't be surprised if City put some of that money back into it. Or they could finally just go and splash big on a Bruno, Bruno Gemara's type and let him play alongside Rodri and give the keys to Foden, De Bruyne to do whatever they want if we haven't got Haaland. I don't know. Um, but I'm relaxed. I trust Guardiola. as a basic approach, but I do. I think Guardiola's a genius. And ultimately, if we don't sign someone... I think it's because there'll be a collective agreement between Guardiola and Cheeky and the board or whatever that the options we've got now are better value for money than whatever we could bring in. I don't think City would intentionally let Guardiola get frustrated. It doesn't make sense given the trying to make his contract extended, you know, trying to make him sign an extension to his contract. Like, I don't see why they'd do that. Surely they want to give him all the tools that he feels are necessary right now. And the money is burning a hole in Manchester City's pocket. We have money to go and buy a player if needs be. We can't plead poverty here. We can't do that. We've, we're, our net spend is absolutely absurd. You know, we've sold 
Um, so many players um, that I'd be very surprised if we can't afford to go and splash 100 million on a player if we wanted to, or at least 30 million on a prospect. We will see. Guys, Alvarez leaves Manchester City, he leaves with our blessing. He's not the most passionate player, Alvarez. So I think it's weird to talk about this. Like, he's probably the best player we'd let go that I sort of shrug at, you know? I don't know. Uh, but I got over, you know, I got over Jesus and Sterling going. I can definitely get over Alvarez going. I don't know how much it'll affect us, but we will see. Let me know in the comments what you make of this transfer to Atletico Madrid. Is it going to cost us? Are you worried? Who do you want to see replace him? Will Guardiola be happy about this? I don't know. But for now, it's done. And I wish you all the best. La, La Rana, is it? For now. Anyway, bye-bye. Subscribe in a bit.